Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. Last week was a breakout week for a number of tech giants. We had Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia and Google hitting all-time high. Their respective rallies had pushed both S&P 500 and Nasdaq to multiple record closing highs throughout the entire week. This strong weekly performance was likely because of a surprise cooling in both CPI inflation data and PPI. At this rate, I really don't know how high will S&P 500 hit by the end of the year. But it doesn't matter for long-term investors, right? So long as you stay invested, you will definitely play a part in this bull run. The only problem we have right now is, how do we pick up shares when the market just keep going up? Let's discuss it in this video. So do watch on till the end, alright? Okay, let's do a very quick recap of what happened last week. I will summarize the following. CPI inflation, FOMC meeting and powwow speech, Fed's dot plot plan, and producer price index, aka PPI. First of all, last Wednesday, much to the satisfaction of Fed chairman Jerome Powell, CPI came in cooler than expected. April headline CPI inflation increased by 3.3% on annual basis, and this is below the expectation of 3.4%. Additionally, the core CPI inflation gained 3.4% year over year. Again, this is lower than the forecast of 3.5%. More importantly, this is the lowest figure since April 2021. On the very same day, Jerome Powell announced another pause to their rate hike campaign. He also highlighted that there has been modest further progress towards the Fed's 2% inflation target. To add on to that, Jerome Powell mentioned no one on the committee has interest rate heights in their base case. But all that being said, Powell said that the central bank does not have the confidence to start lowering interest rates yet, even after May CPI came in cooler than expected. At the same time, Fed's dot plot plan was released. In case you don't know, the Fed's dot plot is a chart that records each Fed official's projection for the central bank's short-term interest rate. This dot plot is updated every three months and it's meant to provide insight to the Fed's future rate decisions. All in all, the dot plot is a piece of information that the market likes to use to connect some dots. Anyway, based on the latest dot plot, the projected rate cuts has dropped from the initial three cuts to just one in 2024. But it didn't seem to have bothered the market as the strength in technology stocks have driven the market higher on Wednesday. Then we had more good news the very next day. On Thursday, core PPI inflation came in at 2.3% which was below expectation of 2.4%. Not just that, May PPI inflation was unchanged at 2.2%. Again, it was below the estimate of 2.5%. This actually ends the first three consecutive monthly increase in PPI inflation since April 2022. This is definitely another welcome sign by the Fed after CPI data. All in all, the hopes for continued cooling of inflation have pushed the S&P 500 and Nasdaq up higher last week as they gained 1.6% and 3.2% respectively. For the week ahead, it's gonna be a shortened week as the US market will be closed on Wednesday due to a public holiday. It will also be a loud and quiet week as compared to last week where we had events from Apple, Tesla and the Federal Reserve. Furthermore, earnings season is winding down as well, with most of the retail favourites having reported their earnings already. There will be some economic data such as jobless claims, retail sales and S&P flash US manufacturing PMI, all of which I don't think are market moving data. Moving over to the technical analysis portion, let's have a look at the broader market SPY. So in my last video, I shared that if Powell doesn't shock the market and if CPI comes in favourably, we could see SPY heading towards the 161.8 Fibonacci level where the next meaningful resistance is. And there you have it, SPY hit that level. Not just that, it tried to break above it on 3 trading days but failed to do so, which echoed what I have said about this level being a resistance level. Come this week, it's pretty straightforward. If SPY can break above this level, the next target would be 555. For this bullish confirmation, we need at least 2 green candles with higher than average volume above 544. 
But if Spy could not get above the 544 resistance level, I think we have a high chance of filling that gap between 537 to 539. The bottom of this gap, in other words 537, is a support level. Spy may bounce off this level and continue its uptrend. Again, if it doesn't, then it will open the door to more downside, and we are talking about 531. But honestly, I wouldn't be too excited even if we reach this 531 level. It's only when SPY starts falling into this mini consolidation zone of 524 to 531, then I will look at picking up some shares. Let's now move over to Apple. Well, well, what can I say for Apple? The bearish thesis that I shared last week got invalidated. Both the triple top and head and shoulder patterns were invalidated when Apple break above 199 with that solid huge green candle and with massive volume. This is the reason why in my technical analysis I always paint two pictures, both bullish and bearish. We should never be too fixated about a particular outcome because time and time again, the market can prove us wrong. Anyway, in my bullish thesis, I shared that there is only one level to watch for the upside, and that's 199. If Apple breaks above that level and creates a new all-time high, sellers would usually dry up. And the stock price will continue to rise for a while, which it did. Apple went as high as 220 after it broke above 199, and was up close to 8% last week. Here's something interesting, just like SPY, Apple hit a bit of resistance at the 161.8 Fibonacci level, which sits at 220. Again, similar to SPY, watch this 161.8 Fibonacci level carefully this week. If Apple can put 2 or 3 solid green candles above it, the next resistance level is around 234, which you and I can't see on the chart. I have to manually calculate the Fibonacci level. On the other hand, if Apple can't break above 220, don't worry yet, we could consolidate above 200 for a while, perhaps all the way to Apple's earnings day, which is sometime in late July or early August, before the next big direction. Okay, the key level to note here is 200. This is one level that used to be a strong resistance that Apple could not break above. But I guess the third time was a chime, as Apple finally broke above it after the third attempt. Since then, this level has turned into a support level. As long as this 200 level holds, Apple is still bullish. Also just to highlight, we had a golden cross on the chart last week, where the 50 moving average crosses above the 200 moving average. Interestingly, the last two times we saw this golden cross in Apple, the stock rose quite significantly for the next few months. Okay, I'm not saying this is guaranteed, but just sharing what I see on the chart with you guys. Anyway, in terms of the bearish thesis, if Apple falls below 200, then we can say that the bullish momentum has paused. That's when I think there is a chance for Apple to grind towards sub 190s. So yep, in short, watch this level 200. Let's now hop over to Tesla's chart. As mentioned in my last two videos, a huge movement can be expected with the Bollinger Band squeezing. Well, we did have sort of a big movement with Tesla rising 6.8% in just two days and went as high as 191. It also went out and above the upper Bollinger Band. To add on, if you were to look at the lowest point of last week, which was 167, and the highest point at 191, the difference is a whopping 14%. But of course, I know nobody can catch the absolute bottom and top so accurately. That said, if someone had able to write at least the 6.8% pop via call options, I think he or she would have gotten some nice profits. Anyway, honestly, this huge movement isn't what many or at least not what I had anticipated because after the 2 days pump, Tesla fell back down on Friday by declining 2.4%. Interestingly, the MACD just had a bullish cross, but be very wary as it could be a fake cross. So for this week, I would say watch this MACD closely and watch if Tesla can break out of this tight range of 168 to around 185. 
To be really frank, I'm not too convinced that this is the end of the huge movement, but I could be wrong and Tesla could continue to just consolidate within this tight range all the way to its earnings day, which is estimated to be around mid-July. But let's say last Friday was just a move to cool off the overbought indicators and to bring Tesla back into the Bollinger Band and if MACD continues to cross up this week, then I think we still have a chance to head towards 200. So other than the consolidation range that I mentioned earlier, I will be watching this blue dotted downtrend line too. For Tesla to be bullish, it needs to go above this line decisively, with at least 2 to 3 green candles and solid volume. In terms of the downside, watch the 50 moving average, as it is quite a strong support level. It's currently sitting at around 172, and it has been holding up pretty well. If this level gets breached, I think it will open the floodgate towards the 61.8 Fibonacci level at around 161. All in all, I am thinking Tesla shareholder meeting took place only late last week and the market only had 1-2 to two days to react, so the reaction and after effect could continue into this week. Let's see what happens from here. By the way, give me 30 seconds. If you have found my content useful, do consider supporting the channel through any of the following options. You can buy me a coffee, a YouTube super thanks, or just simply tap on the like and subscribe buttons, or maybe share my videos with your friends. Any form of support will be greatly appreciated. Moving over to Google's chart, Google hit all-time high last week, that's obviously bullish. But somehow it's still following my technical analysis of moving within this green dotted uptrend channel. In fact, it got rejected at the top end of the channel. But some potential good news for the bulls. Despite the rejection, last Friday's candle was pretty solid with a bullish engulfing candle. And looking at the MACD, it is about to have a bullish cross note the word about to have, but it hasn't been confirmed yet, so watch it closely this week. Well, if the MACD crosses up this week, then we have a chance to test the all-time high again, which means Google could create another record high. On the other hand, if MACD didn't manage to cross up, watch for 173 as the first decent Fibonacci support level. Google has been trading above this level since mid-May, with a slight drop to the second Fibonacci level at around 169. In short, Google is on a nice uptrend, and therefore every single Fibonacci level that you see on the screen is a potential bounce area. In terms of the bearish thesis, I will only say that the trend has turned bearish if the 50% Fibonacci level breaks, which is 165, because at 165, it also means Google has fallen out of the uptrend channel. Below 165, please be mentally prepared for Google to hit 162 at the very least. It may even head towards the gap area between 156 to 162. Let's now check out Meta's chart. Meta is also moving in a pretty predictable trend or range. As shared in my previous video, the moment Meta broke above the mini consolidation zone and the resistance level of 483, we could see Meta grinding towards at least the 500 level. I also mentioned that further bullish momentum will see Meta hitting the top end of the second consolidation area at around 512, and Meta did exactly that. If you have managed to ride the upside from 483 to 512, good job to you. Alright, for this week, if we want to see a new all-time high in Meta, watch this key level 513. I repeat, 513. I realized Meta had attempted to break above this level a few times previously, including last week, but failed to do so. And coincidentally, the only time it went above this 513 with a solid green candle, Meta hit a new all-time high. In short, above 513, gives us a decent chance of grinding towards the record height of 531, but the price action may not happen within this one week. Ok, on the other hand, if Meta couldn't break above 513, don't worry, it may just chop around this consolidation area between 482 and 513, but this also means there is some chance for Meta to hit below 500 again. Ok, personally, I think the moment we have a few red candles below 500, 
the gap between 478 to 483 will act as a magnet to pull Meta down. Again, it may not materialize this week, so do continue to follow my channel and videos for weekly updates. Alright, let's have a look at Microsoft. Finally, finally Microsoft had a breakout movement. I have been talking about this very predictable range of 390 to 430 for the longest time, and finally Microsoft has broke out of this range. Let me show you something interesting. Ever since Microsoft embarked on this uptrend from January 2023, I noticed one trend. Basically, as you can see from the chart, Microsoft tends to consolidate for a while and then have a huge run up. So is now another huge run up by Microsoft? Possible, but not guaranteed. We can't predict how high Microsoft can go. But what I notice is, so long as we stay above the previous consolidation area, Microsoft tends to build another base or another consolidation area. This means that if Microsoft can stay above 430, we could see another base being built. As building a base takes time, I think it will take another two weeks for us to see if this is indeed the case. If it is, I may consider picking up some shares. I mean, that was what I did. I picked up some Microsoft shares when it was consolidating between 390 and 430, and those shares are sitting on some nice profits right now. Okay, on the other hand, if Microsoft falls below 430, then we can say welcome back to the previous consolidation zone. Below 430, it means 421 will be the next target. And it wouldn't surprise me if it continues to fall towards 408, where the critical 61.8 Fibonacci level is. But honestly, I think the odds of Microsoft hitting this 408 level this two weeks is pretty low as we have little catalyst, barring any black swan events of course. But well, never say never, if it happens, I will definitely be happy because I may consider stepping up some shares again. Moving over to the options trading segment, quite a lot to update this week. Okay, the first trade to update is this covered call on Bank of America with a strike price of $38, expired last Friday, 14th June. The contract was first sold on 19 April and was supposed to expire on 31st May. But because I wanted to get the free dividends from the company, so I decided to roll the contract before it hit the expiration date. By doing so, my expiration date was changed from 31st May to last Friday, 14th June. For your information, the ex-dividend date was 7 June, which means I needed to have those shares in my brokerage account on that day in order to get the dividends. Well, since I had the shares with me on 7 June, and therefore I will get the dividends from the company. Not a lot, it's just $24 for 100 shares. Anyway, on the expiration date 14th June, Bank of America closed above my strike price of $38. As a result, the 100 shares will get caught away. In other words, this coming Monday, 100 shares of Bank of America will disappear from my brokerage account and I will receive $3,800. In case you're not aware, these shares were assigned to me some time ago at $38 per share. Therefore, I am okay to allow them to get caught away at the same price. To summarize, I receive a total premium of $85 for this particular trade and if I were to add the dividends of about $17 after deducting the reholding tax, the net profit is around 100 bucks. And don't forget, I have sold a few covered calls against these shares before they got caught away. Therefore, the profit is definitely more than $100. Anyway, with the shares getting caught away, I have completed the full options wheel strategy. Don't know what's that? Do consider checking out my video link at the top. It's a strategy that allows you to make some side income. Alright, the next trade to update is this covered call on Tesla that was sold last Wednesday, 12 June. This is a trade that didn't go according to my initial plan and I thought it's a good learning experience to share with viewers. So last Wednesday, Tesla popped ahead of their shareholder meeting which was scheduled for 13th June and I wanted to do a quick scalp or day trade through covered call. What I did was that I sold a covered call with a strike price of $200 expiring 26 July. The premium received was $525. My initial plan was to wait for the stock price to fit a little bit during intraday and quickly buy back the contract to earn some net premium. However, Tesla was showing decent strength throughout the entire day and I couldn't exit my trade. 
And then, lo and behold, the very next day before the market opened, Elon Musk tweeted that shareholders were voting in favour of his compensation package, even before the actual results were out. As a result, Tesla popped even more. It actually rose 6% during pre-market. To make things worse, when the market opened, Tesla continued to rise and I was unable to exit my cover call trade. But a day later, after Tesla had its shareholder meeting, it turned out to be a buy the rumor, sell the news event. Tesla basically fell 2.4%. So right now, the trade is sitting on a very tiny profit of 0.5%. Just to share, the trade was down more than 50% at one point. Alright, so getting trapped in a trade, what am I gonna do? Well, what I am trying to bring across here is always have a backup plan and always prepare for the worst case scenario where the trade goes against you. For this trade, there is a reason why I have selected $200 as the strike price and not $180, $185, etc. The reason is because I have 100 Tesla shares that were assigned to me at $200 per share previously. Therefore, even if Tesla continues to fly higher from here, the premium of my contract can get as expensive as it wants, making me unable to exit this trade. The worst case scenario would be, I will just do nothing. I don't buy back the contract, I let it expire, and I let the shares get caught away at $200 per share. What I will gain in return would be the $525 premium that I have collected right from the start. In fact, before this, I have already milked a $900 premium against these shares. So, my total profit would be around $1,425. To me, that's like the market makers paying me this money to keep the 100 Tesla shares for a while before returning back to them. Yes, this is the worst case scenario. Doesn't sound too bad, right? Alright, next up, I will be updating two day trades that I have made. First of all, it's this cash secure put on Tesla. The contract was sold on 11 June with a strike price of 140 expiring 19 July. The premium that I received was 245. The plan for this trade was to buy back the contract during the day to earn some net premium. But if somehow the trade goes against me, I don't mind holding on to the contract for a longer period because 140 strike price is a good support level and the odds of Tesla breaching it in the short term is not that high. Anyway, on the very same day, I managed to buy back the contract by paying a premium of 215 With this, the net profit for the trade is $30. Again, it's not a lot, but I will take it anytime. The second day trade to update is this covered call on Tesla that was sold on last Friday, 14 June. What happened was, after Tesla shareholder meeting, investors started to dump the shares a little bit, and I saw that as an opportunity to open a slightly bearish trade. So I sold this covered call and received a premium of $925. During the day, Tesla continued to be weak, and I managed to buy back the contract at $845. As a result, the net profit for this trade is $80. Combine this with the earlier $30, so my two small day trades for last week gave me about $110. Not too shabby for additional coffee money. By the way, something interesting to highlight. For the second day trade, I sold a call contract when Tesla was trading at 179 flat. And when I bought back the contract, Tesla was also trading at around 179 And yet, there was a difference of $80 in the premium. Why is that so? Well, that's because there was a drop in implied volatility, aka IV. If you wish to know how IV can affect your profits, do check out my video on 3 hacks for options wheel strategy. I have linked the video at the top. Alright, some end thoughts to wrap up this video. I know the market is going strong as we are seeing all-time highs every other week and every other day. If you are a DCA long-term investor, good job to you you probably have lots of skin in this bull run. But for long-term investors like me who like to enter or snap up shares when there are pullbacks, it could be very challenging to buy anything right now. This is why I have said in my past videos that for most investors, it's better to stick to dollar cost averaging, aka DCA. Anyway, back to my very own style. Well, I am of the view that the reality of the stock market is, 
even in the very strong bull market, there are going to be days and weeks where the market takes a small breather and pause, and where people take some profits off the table. We saw that I think about 2-3 to three months ago, and I managed to pick up some shares. But of course, I must admit that I have not been able to purchase anything for the last one month. Yes, the market could continue to go higher from here and I could miss out more gains. But I guess that's the downside of not DCAing into the market, which I am absolutely okay with it. So for now, I will just remain patient, do some short-term trading and wait for the next pullback. I mean, we have had such a strong, strong run in the market and had so many aggressive rallies, especially after some soft CPI and PPI data. It is just a matter of time that we can get some dips in the market. All in all, the current market momentum looks bullish all the way till the US election period. But that being said, nobody can accurately predict what's gonna happen in the next few months. So do stay updated with the macro environment as things continue to unfold around us. Okay, that's about it for this video. Do remember to help me grow the channel by liking, subscribing and sharing my videos with others. Thank you very much.